The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussion. Kevin Nash podcast. Click this. Kevin, I have to tell you, you sound better. I was talking to you a few minutes ago, and I'm, I'm yeah. glad to hear and see my guy back. I still am not 100. I'm probably about 80%. Right. Well, listen. 80% I, trained legs, I trained legs today and coughed up a lung. An 80% vote will get you uh, a super majority in the house, so 80% uh, should count o- for Only something. if I'm trying to... Uh to block the images of the uh, riders uh, from from persecution from You'll blur the faces yeah. i have it later but i'll jump to it hold on i just wanted Jesus. to read a definition for anybody who i want to read the quote so that it's all out there speaker johnson has said quote we have to blur some this is in regard to the uh, releasing of the what the fuck it was a 44,000 uh, uh uh of the uh, january 6th riots uh when the uh, uh united states terrorists uh attacked the capitol we have to blur some of the faces of persons who participated in the events that day because we don't want them to be retaliated against and to be charged by the DOJ. The definition of obstruction of justice is as follows. <laughs> obstruction of justice in the United States jurisdictions is an act that involves unduly influencing, impeding or otherwise interfering with the justice system, especially the legal and procedural tasks of prosecutors, investigators, and other government officials. Hopefully everyone else knows that definition at the department. Are these people that fucking stupid? Or are yes. they just... Absolutely. I mean, please tell me that somebody's holding a cue card, and it's like the, it's a rib on them. I don't know, dude. It's... uh. There, uh, there is this state of grace that they start to operate in, and I think the Trump administration was was guilty of this, where there is a bit of an above the law um, vibe that uh, people seem to adopt. I, I, it's so even if you feel this way, Kevin, even if you felt this way, if you were the Speaker of the House, to say that, it's not just, to try to find some other reason, it's so anti. I mean, it's so anti police. I know, yeah, yeah, the 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 party of law and so order. So the I mean, only I, time, so let me let me get this right. The only time that, and I'm not going to say that that the right, just that faction of the right, feels that the police are in the right, is when they're going against Black Lives Matters, right. When it's trying to keep them from taking over a government right. building, they can be killed. They can be killed, but then, uh, any other time, it's... This, couldn't this moron at least say, couldn't you go, we have to blur these faces. Someone might be mistaken for one of these uh, seditious terrorists uh, on their block, and it's not them, and they might have been retaliated against, and this woman just looks like a woman on the video. I don't want innocent people to be harmed because of the terrible actions on J- when, of course, secretly you just want to protect these people from prosecution. But couldn't you at least be good at it and present it as something else? Couldn't you cover your fucking horns? Could you not? This is the guy. This is the same Sorry, guy that, that comes into the uh, convenience store for for the robbery with the deer rifle, and the Asian guy from behind the counter's got a thirty-eight. And the guy can't get the rifle back behind the glass. And the guy peppers him with guy peppers him with the thirty eight. That's right. this that, that's Johnson. What a perfect name too, right? Johnson. Oh yeah. Like just just fucking just you know, just it's dragging sad. my balls across his face. Just Well, you know what? You you, you do sound better. You may only be eighty percent, but you know what? I would celebrate this with a nice plane ride over to Europe. Mm, that should be fun. That should be fun. Well, you're hacking your whole lung. You're going though, so I I I I was concerned that that it wasn't going to happen. We're not. I'm not on the plane yet. 
No, oh, dude, don't even. You're you're getting better. So my wife would shoot me in the face. You'll you'll be back by the time folks hear this. Oh, well, as I said, uh, by the time by the time yeah by the time that uh, anybody hears this will. But you're going to your old stomping grounds in Germany. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was I was up north, but this is yeah. We're going going down to see the uh, the castle in Schweinstein. And um, we're going to go to the Nuremberg Christmas uh, Festival. Uh, Christmas in Germany. Why do they put the pickles on? I see this. The Germany's supposed to be pickles on the fucking tree, right? Am I wrong about this? Someone tell we, me. I, we never audience. did. When I was there, I never did. You never did. Okay. No. Pickles mean something in relation to Christmas. Someone look it up and prove me right lest anyone continue to look at me like I have a giant Johnson hanging off my face. Um, last week's show, Ruben Polizzi says, Love the new graphics. Very clean. I'm here in Detroit watching the show on a work trip. Can't wait to get some Detroit-style pizza. Ruben, let us know what you get. Did I tell you? So, I... Open up my my app on my phone, and it has the uh, Daytona Beach uh, News Journal. There's an article. Of course, they want you to you know subscribe to it. So I got to do a bunch of shit so I can read the fucking article and not pay them their two bucks. So, and it's Jets Pizza from Detroit is bringing Detroit style square pizza. To the Daytona Beach area, on Clyde Morris and Dunlop. So how do they not have you there for uh, the grand opening? No, I'll be there. I'll just be with a Molotov cocktail after hours are over. And just fucking rifle it through the window. There it is. And look at there the, it is. The... I mean, nothing says Detroit quite quite like pizza you never had as a kid. I don't give a shit. Look at that pizza. That looks amazing. Does look pretty good. I'm not a pepperoni guy. I'm down nine pounds, Kevin. What did I say last week? Uh, when we moved together. It was like it was six and a half or something. So it's seven. nine, seven. seven. Okay, seven so, last night. So, so it's right. nine now. But can you? Can you? I. I don't mind that you're losing weight. But I just want you to sound young. I'll I'll work <laughs> on that. I had a a sound a, uh, an audio a uh, a voice audition for a. One of those big, big, big pictures there with the uh, superhero types or villain types, I guess. And uh, they uh, they wanted me to sound 30 instead of 50. So I uh, I pitched up a little bit. I pitched up, did a little, little squeeze downtown, and I was able to, you know, sound a little younger, man. Um, uh, Ruben, we'll update you on the, uh, on the pizza coming to... Uh, to Daytona, as you're clearly interested. Nate Nizzle, I bet the big takeaway that the wrestling news sites will take away from this episode is when Nash said Triple H said it would be him that beat CM Punk. See, now this is funny. You know, I, go ahead. I, so I'm reading that and I'm just like, wow, yeah, newsflash, because I'm quite sure that Phil... Doesn't remember getting beat by by Paul. I'm quite sure Paul doesn't remember booking it, and people remembering that I was supposed to work with CM Punk and it never happened. But now, oh my God, the the, the Ouija board fucking finally is moved into in, into place, and it's just like, are you fucking kidding me? How is that news? Let me tell you something. I know that's your reaction, and you told me that on the phone. But before we would film an episode in the kayfabe days of Timeline, I would always talk to the talent if they didn't know the show or they weren't familiar with, they hadn't done one, what we're going to do. I said, what you think is an insignificant event, the viewers will latch on to. So something that was said in the locker room, some booking decision that changed last minute, um, you know, it, it was, it was a month, it was six weeks that, 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 that they took place where they, that, that Paul took that, took my spot to, to, to wrestle Phil. But what I'm saying, you think, think it's insignificant, but I knew that that though I, you had told me that before, I knew that detail 
would definitely resonate with people. And yeah, for because, Christ's sake, Nate, but at the same the time, takeaway it, of the it, week, it's it's. I always look at that when I. It's like when somebody says, "You really hate CM Punk." Immediately, my mind goes to somebody that's sixteen years old. <laughs> I hate you. I hate. I hate. I hate lima beans. I hate. I hate. What gets to be sixty-four years old? I fucking hate anything. Yeah, I, I responded to one comment uh, this week. I try not to do any ever, but uh, someone was like, "Yeah, uh, you, like, like, yeah, hey, what, what are you gonna do now? What are you gonna talk about now? He's back. Like, like it, like it mattered so much to me." I said, "How much do you think I should care about a wrestler coming back to a wrestling federation where he used to wrestle, but he hasn't wrestled there in a while? What? How, how significant should this be to me?" I don't know if he replied, but wasn't quite like when Trump took Ohio against Hillary. I mean, that was kind of a. I said to my couch, I went, "Oh, I know for a fact that nobody's ever been president and not won Ohio." So, yeah. this doesn't look good for the Hill Hill, uh, Hill bag man. She she gave away the Rust Belt. Yeah, she was like, ah, "We don't have to go talk to blue collar white guys. We got them in the bag. We got them in the bag." Hopefully everyone paid attention to that one. Bill Thomas. Hi, guys. Uh, love the podcast. True highlight of my week every Monday. Also, thanks for making that Joe Piscopo song show up eternally in my YouTube recommendations. You are truly doing the Lord's work. Do wow. Can. Sorry. Silver Bullet. Is this click this or is this the follow-up appointment I forgot to make with my physician? Didn't think I'd be analyzing triglycerides this morning, but here we are. Yeah, because we promised you, Silver Bullet, that every week was going to be different. You're bellying up to the bar with Nash. That's what this is. Sometimes you talk was, in the ball game. Sometimes I was you're under, talking triglycerides. Yeah, I was under the weather. So when you're under the weather, like the, what, what's the one thing you immediately think? Oh, man, I, I can't kick man what the hell's going on is this is this the all of a sudden i hear jim moore's go this is the end the only end my friend mother yes son <laughs> would you where'd you where'd you sit on the doors a fan or or just two sides oh i was, a, I was a fan. yeah i was uh i was a fan but became more so well i after reading riders on the storm but uh, also, I thought Val Kilmer oh, he, was so amazing. How he did not get an Oscar for that. Did you see what a bad way he landed? Uh, yeah. I, I had no like idea. Throat or some kind of cancer. Yes. Yeah. There's a good I documentary thought it was, I thought it was him. cool that Val. they brought him back for that second uh, Top Gun. Oh, did that? I didn't. Yeah, uh, I didn't he's see a, it. yeah. They had, he had a cameo where Cruz, you know, goes and talks to him in his crib. That's what I thought was that was pretty classy. Jimmy Delgado, I love the political talk. It's like debating pro sports or WWE versus AEW. Thank you, Jimmy. I, you know, and, and 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 that's the whole thing. I said, like, how can you not want to have discourse about everything? Well, it's the exactly. I always tell people when they're like, ah, you know, when you talk politics, hey, we don't really talk politics. We talk about the world. Triglycerides are in the fucking world. Basketball's in the world. Football's in the world. Kevin's quad is in the world. And you know what? The presidency's in the world. So it's going to get covered. I mean, to me, when somebody goes to the quad thing, it's just like, uh, like, I, then I immediately. I, I go to the bottom of Bikini Bottom again, and I see Patrick just, I mean, just some mouth-breathing, 50 IQ, you know, it just, who's, yeah, hey, you got to get off the bus. This is the end of the line, buddy. It's a good one. David McCutcheon, I don't care about the borders. We have enough crazy white men shooting up public places. Other countries should be keeping us out. Also, 
I am the radical leftist. Y'all have been trash talked, but I love you guys and I love the show. I'm not a snowflake like the righty haters who chat on the comments here about how it hurts their feelings. I can take a punch and keep smiling. Keep up the good work. Love the shows. Thank you for the work week entertainment. David, so, you're what so, you would call in the old days a man. So when the Civil War comes down, we, we do have one sniper. We <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I, yeah, the left, David, you're going to be busy if this ever happens. They're yeah. going to they're going to need a general. You're going to be like Ed Harris. Mm -hmm. You know, I I was what was at, that enemy at, at, at enemy at the gate? Enemy at the gates. Uh I shoot law and then Ed Harris with the two snipers. I like that Ed Harris built a career with thinning hair because you'd think that that couldn't happen. But, you know, when my hair started to get thinner, I, I, I kind of, I, I was inspired by him. He, he rocked some good parts. He did a great job at, as Pollock. Oh, I'm a big Ed Harris fan. Big yeah, Ed I'm Harris too. Fan. i tell you where I, I really dug him was uh, Westworld. He came back to the HBO Westworld. Didn't watch him. Yeah. And then uh, what else did I, I see him in not too long ago? It was, oh, it was that movie I told you about. His son came home. I think his son was Bradley Cooper. It was a kind of tearjerker. What are we going to His dad was a writer. I want to uh, think it was Bradley Cooper. But his, it was, his dad was dying of cancer or something. Okay. Yeah. That was, that was a, Harris was really good. When I say hello fresh, I know you get excited because I know your wife and her family um are uh frequent orderers is that even a word is that even a word of hello they, fresh i know that they that, yeah they they definitely order that and uh and they should for god's sakes because it's farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep i think now that i'm losing this weight uh, this is going to be the way for me to go. I have to increase the plan from three maybe to five days a week. Skip trips to the grocery store. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. I need it idiot-proof, guys. Let me just say from me. I need it portioned. you got to give me these ingredients. I'm not looking for saffron anywhere, but I was introduced to saffron from one of these recipes. Okay, So that's the kind of stuff that happens. I do enjoy the cooking process, but like all the preparation and finding the stuff, send it to me. Tell me how to do it and I'll knock it out. A stress-free holiday season is what you should be looking for, and HelloFresh is going to help you do that. Skip the grocery store, save time with easy, tasty recipes. They're seasonal. I love that they change it up. Uh, Tis the season for giving, everyone, so this is also a great gift. Did you know HelloFresh does more than dinners? From easy breakfast to start your morning right, uh, you got 10-minute lunches, satisfying snacks for adults and kids. HelloFresh has tasty choices for every mealtime occasion. Best part, no grocery trip required. So, folks, go to HelloFresh.com slash click-free, K-L-I-Q-F-R-E-E, -E, because you're getting free breakfasts for life. One breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash click-free. Free with the code click free. You will now know why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, like you do, Kevin. Darren Sparks, I've literally listened to every episode of this podcast, Sean. So, can I remember in over a year of episodes how to go find the exact moment you said Biden's a good president? No, I can't. However, I can definitely say you've been 95% positive in your assessment of his first term. Lastly, interesting use the term, first term. Lastly, you want me to look at his record. Well, let me tell you, I've talked to a lot of Biden voters in this tri-state area who are disgusted with him at this point because almost everything in their life has cost them more since Joe got in office, let alone, we're going to go back to talking about the war and all the reasons gas is higher. I'm not going to do that. But, did um, you see where... Um, not much was higher for me. Uh, did you see uh, where sorry. We, we, we passed uh, China? And gross national product? I did. I did. And I actually have a graphic for that, which is coming up now. Because Venom, 
77 says, you guys are high, <laughs> saying the economy was back on track. Tax cut was not for the wealthy either. Do the research as far as that goes. Well, Venom, I, I don't like to spend a lot of time on rebuttals of the obvious, but maybe this will help you in your research. First, um, we could take the GDP. Uh, here is the GDP, um, and we are record high. What are we at now? Just slide to the... This is mo most recent quarter on this is third quarter of 23. Okay, so you can show me, Venom, how this proves your point that uh, the right. economy is not back on track. If you don't like that one, Steve, can you bring up the unemployment numbers, please? Um, let's go to this one. Maybe this is where your evidence is. Um, so there's where we are. There's COVID. So this is what we had to come back from. And here we are now. Okay, so I, I maybe I don't see your point there either, but you can maybe oh. tell me where that is. Um, so there's when Biden took but, office. Well, you got to be the... careful, man, because we're talking facts here. I know that I, people don't like and facts. And they just don't like facts. Those of you listening, feel free to jump over to YouTube. You can see the graphs I'm showing everyone. All right, maybe this didn't do it, Kevin. Maybe right. this wasn't it. So what's the other indicator of economy? Let's look at the Dow Jones. Okay, right. let's just bring up the Dow. I just, I just got my year-end uh, statement. I, I'm just thinking, like, I'm at about 17.9 on my complete portfolio this year. The so. dip you see in the center there is obviously COVID, okay? So post-COVID, how did we do? How are we doing? Okay, so I think we're, we're, we're near. The, the record was hit. What date would that be if you slide back, Steve, to, uh, I don't know if it gives you uh, the actual date that that record, like December August? 22, maybe? December 22. Go back to August. The, the, the high point right, right there. there. So right there. Is that, that looks like, was it this, between August and December of 22, okay? I don't know the exact. So I'm not seeing your point there either, Venom. So maybe, maybe you can send me a graph. Um, now, if you want to, if you want to go on the fact that uh, he's uh, continues to ship uh, arms to Israelis who are bombing the Palestinians, I mean, if you, if you want to go on that and say that that may not be uh, exactly uh, one of his his, his best moves we, uh, this is what we've got to we've got to we've got to uh, solidify this there are three teams there's the israelis there's hamas and in the middle of the palestinian people i'm pro palestinian people and i'm pro israeli because i know hamas it's as simple as this Hamas, they had a situation where uh, uh, Israel had a situation where a commander fucked up and, and some people got killed and he was able and they were able to pinpoint it and he was it was taken out, out, out of the out of the picture. I wasn't killed or anything. But he was taken off off duty. Whereas if Hamas could eradicate every Jew in Israel, they would. It's, it's just period. There's just, I mean, there's just, it, it's not a question. It's in their charter. It's, it's from but, the river to the sea, right? Isn't yes. that the reference? But at the same time, if you're going to carpet bomb and you're going to tell people move south of this and bomb that, and if you're going to do that, what you're, what you're basically doing is, and you may think you're going to eradicate them to some degree, the ideology you'll never eradicate, and it's, that's the that's the biggest problem we have. By them taking, and then you go back to the the, the, the fact that they knew that this was all going to go down. The Israelis, I mean, they knew that this was going. It just like, like well. You know when Whatever you get you... the handgun and you kind of stand at the door waiting for waiting for someone to come on the porch, you know? It's like, I'm going to protect my home, and it's, you know, standing there waiting, waiting. The, there are rules of war, and this was mentioned a little bit when we first had the Israeli response, and I didn't hear 
much talked about after. I mean by our government. I don't mean by the media. They, they are the, the, by the MSM. By the MSM, the mainstream media. Mainstream media. <laughs> I, I, if anyone that doesn't want or to MSNBC. Which I we thought, thought it was. Were... I thought it was an <laughs> MSN uh, typo, but it was MSM it for mainstream media. Yeah, I, yeah, but God forbid, we're yeah. yeah. Well, you know what it is. I'm not. I'm not obsessed with the uh, thrown around the acronyms and whatnot. So I, I missed mainstream. Media. Let alone the fact that how many people that use the term mainstream media aren't completely copped out of their mind. Because you, you, if you, if you're, if you watch Fox News for four seconds of your day, and you say that you watch main, nothing but mainstream media, you're lying, because that's not mainstream media. MSNBC and Fox News are both propaganda, as far as I'm concerned. So, what is mainstream media? What, what would they consider not mainstream media is is what I wonder. They never mad, went on to mad, explain that. Mad Magazine? I mean, I don't fucking know. Newsletters? Communist newsletters? Mimeographed? What, Reddit, I mean, it's a what, Reddit? I mean, what where, where, what exactly is mainstream media? To me, I it's think like... I mean, anything on cable with advertising, I think, is probably what they would consider mainstream Yeah, but media. if it's fucking... Uh, Big viewership. That's that's not mainstream. That's that it's got sponsorship because it's entertainment, and they're trying to get they're trying to to keep a story to keep you watching, so their advertising dollars go up. Can I drop one more graphic? Have I dropped too many facts today, Kevin, or do we have room for one more graphic? I didn't address uh, the venoms. Uh, I, I, I tried to address his commentary on Biden and the economy, but he did say one thing at the end. He said uh, tax cut was not for the wealthy either. Do the research as far as that goes. So I have just one more graphic to address mm -mm. that, and then I'll be done. So could you zoom in on the first graphic right there, uh, Steve? The numbers in the blue, the large columns, that is the percentage of tax filers that fall in that category. So the first column says less than $45,000 a year reported. So actually, the majority of the filers, 44%, are in that category. The second, the bar next to it, the red, is the share of the tax cut that uh, party got. I say party, I mean that group of people. So the 44.6% who reported they made less than $45,000 a year, this is after the 2018 uh, tax cuts that were not for the wealthy, by the way, according to Venom. 4.4% um, of the tax cuts went to that group. Second group is 45,000 to 100,000. 32% of our population is in uh, reporting taxes are in that category. 14% of Trump's uh, tax code, uh, uh, cuts went there. Uh, third one, 100,000 to 200,000, smaller group of folks, only 16% of the population, um, and uh, conversely, only 10% of the tax cuts went there. Next category, 200,000 to 1 million. 6.1% of the population can report $200,000 to 1 million. 22% of the tax cuts went there. Last category, more here than- Here we go, here comes, the, here comes the real middle class. More than $1 million reported in income. 0.5% of our population, 48.8% of the tax cuts went there. Venom, I don't see it there either. I'm probably not looking. I don't know what MSM means, so I'm probably reading that graph <laughs> wrong also. So you can drop that, Steve. We've dedicated enough time to educate. I've got, I've got two, 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 uh, a couple of, uh, is close to one of our closest friends, Tamara and I. Both of them are school teachers. They got their tax cut, both of them combined. It was like $113 a month. Two school teachers, right? You know, making probably in Florida yeah. probably fell into the around a hundred thousand category, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just unbelievable. And how how somebody can sit there and art, and not only that, type it, type it so there's actually proof that this is what you think. Now you have to look in the mirror and just you have to. This is like the, 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 the confessional. You have to look in the mirror and give yourself, I'm a dumb fuck 25 times. 
just give yourself loud, and you have to say it loud too. I'm a dumb fuck. I'm a dumb fuck, and you got to go from there. You would, you would at this point only 23. So those off. See, we'll and, and you notice it's it's venom that's posting this. David McCutcheon, yeah. who said, "You guys make fun of me. I'm the extreme liberal." He put his name. I'm assuming that's his real name. Why would you make up David McCutcheon? Who knows? But he put that there. He said, you make fun of me. Love you guys anyway. Venom, however, is is uh, is Venom 77. So it might tell you a little right there. Spirit, spirit of seven, seven, brother. Guys, you can join us for live tapings like our audience does every week here. Um, give me some shout outs, guys. I could show everybody that you're with us. ClickThisTV.com is where you do that. Okay, join us. If we're doing stuff. anything illegal, you might notice that, that a slight, like a maybe a hue or a scan over us where we can't completely be. Oh, no, yeah, just yeah. so yeah, but that's that's just so that that that's to protect our innocence, right? Right from prosecution. For prosecution, go check out clickthistv.com. Join us, join us for our live tapings, and uh, Wasn't also that drag you get the shows early on Friday. When Dragnet used to have that back in the day. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Names have been changed to protect the guilty, the innocent, but not they now. Say? Oh no, <laughs> not, not now. guilty. Exactly. Have you said you couldn't get in a you couldn't get your cock in a Lamborghini? That's because you're full scale, twenty four seven, popping your Blue Chew. That's right. The tap Times. out. So? Sponsored <laughs> by Blue Chew. Guys, remember the days you were ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Our friends at Blue Chew, our long, lovely relationship with Blue Chew. Uh, and they're now sponsoring our the Our first tap love. Out. Our first love. You never get your first love. No. Um. Their unique online service, Blue Chew, is they deliver the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. We live in a day and age where you ha you should have every convenience at, at, at your fingertips if it's affordable. And this Blue Chew, there is no reason for a guy not to have this. You can take them anytime, day or night, plan ahead, be ready whenever the opportunity arises. If it comes in convenient little packs, throw it in your wallet, just be out and about and ready to rock. You never know when you're going to need it, okay? Process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers. Once you're approved, bang, no pun, you're going to receive your prescription within days. Best part, it's all done online, okay? No pharmacy, no doctor's office. This is discreet, fast, and beautiful, okay? Uh, they want you to have better sex, and that's what this is all about. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners, as we always do. You can try this for free. There's no reason you shouldn't do this. It's free, guys. Use the promo code NASH at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code NASH to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank BlueChew for sponsoring this segment, which Thanks, is guys. the tap out. Um, for this one, this, I came across this, I'd seen this a long time ago. Guys, if you're high or you, maybe you're going to have a little get blitzed later on, find this clip on YouTube and just watch the full thing. It's unbelievable. I believe it's called the worst thing I ever saw on public access TV. Public access TV, for anyone who's too young to know, was where anybody, much like this, got to go on air and have people see you. It was restricted to a community, so you'd go on, like, the local cable in Daytona or wherever, and you could... You, we used to always watch it in New York City. Yeah, you, you get you get some show. I used to love Al Goldstein in New York City with his Screw magazine. Um, Midnight Blue, actually, was the name of his show. But anyway, so people would go on if they had... Sometimes they were activist types... Uh, they needed to reach the public in the local community. And this thing is unbelievable. Let's watch a little bit of this. Kev, when you're done, you let me know. And uh, here it is. Looks like fucking Harry Carey. Doesn't sound like him. All right, fuck him. That, that's it. He made an adjustment, though, Kevin. It's going to start sounding yeah, better. Him. That's he freaking... plays this thing. It's For anyone listening, it's a wind-up. I, I should know the instrument, I guess. 
a wind-up thing that makes this humming buzzing that he barks out in Bulgarian uh, uh, lyrics over for seven minutes and 20 seconds. And the tune goes nowhere and gets no better than that. I love that clip. I love that those people got to have access to television programming. I find that more entertaining than 90% of what was on television. I think that was the fucking start of the rise of the suicide fucking rate in our country. I don't think he, I don't think he lasted 10 seconds with you, Cameron. But uh, go find that and uh, make sure you you, you uh, get yourself in the proper state, let's say. I wouldn't want to encourage anyone to do anything. I had a couple of my buddies I, that, that got the uh, get blitzed. And they thumbs up all of them, all of them. They're just like, you were fucking around, Nash. Like, there you go. We're going to talk about them in just a minute. But first, Kevin, I feel you've been doing too well with Florida man or Jersey guy. I mean, your okay. record speaks for itself after 75 weeks here. I think, th I think we've, d we've done it almost every week. We have some of the people do well, enjoy we, these. If we're going to get rid of Florida guy over no. that fucking tap out shit. No, no, Jesus. no, it's, I've added an element this week. Right. It's Florida man, Jersey guy, or Borg Genesis. Ah, three headlines this week. <clears throat> and you'll have to identify which is which first in no particular order. If you're playing at home, first one, homeowner calls cops on Bob Dylan mistaken for a homeless man. Second headline. Man charged after assaulting wife with sausage. Police say alcohol may have been a factor. Last headline. Man puzzled by sudden appearance of glowing genitals and a fuck stick that expands and retracts like a lightsaber. So, Florida man, Jersey guy, or Borg Genesis for the head. The first one was the uh, homeowner that actually called the police on Bob Dylan, mistaken for a homeless man walking around in the rain. Second one, say that's that's Jersey guy. Second one, man charged assaulting wife with his sausage. That's going to be Florida Borg Genesis is the glowing fuck stick. I can't stump him even with the addition of the third story. <laughs> he gets it again. Uh, yes, the homeowners called the cops on Bob Dylan. I got to grab this for a minute. This is ABC News. This is. This, oh, it's mainstream media, so I don't know where you want to file this, but um, Long Branch, New Jersey. M MSM? It's MSM. Long Branch, New Jersey. Bob Dylan detained by police. This is in 2009 <clears throat> when a young officer failed to recognize him. The officer proceeded to go to earnest lengths to ensure the hooded, disheveled, rain-soaked music legend was, in fact, who he said he was. Bob Dylan, one of the most celebrated eccentric artists in American history, was in the area on July 23rd as part of a national concert tour. So, actual story there. Uh, the uh, sausage. Alcohol's usually involved when you're assaulting your wife with your sausage. Uh, this is, uh, where do we go to for this? Ray Allen in St. Petersburg. <clears throat> uh, domestic battery. Yeah, he's, really, he's really aged since that fucking that buzzer beater with the Celtics. Was it a DJ? No, Ray Allen. Oh, Ray Allen. Sorry, I, I was I was going. He look. He he looks like they he played, could be. They played ball in Connecticut. See, I would I would have said uh, Parish maybe with the uh, face there, but uh, yes, threw some sausage at his wife, and uh, that uh, that'll get you locked up down there in Florida, as it should. Uh, alcohol likely uh, uh, played a part. Uh, the sausage involved in the alleged battery was not seized as evidence. Uh, the folks at the Messenger. Uh, yeah, once they re once they the realized it was actually connected to his body, <laughs> they they, they, they was it a ring balloon? They didn't throw it in an envelope. Unbelievable. Uh, antics. Listen, Kevin. I put on the makeup. I donned the makeup this week I with my it. daughter. I watched the Kiss pay per view. I did not go to the show. I was so close. I was on the fence. I had my game time app open. And I was on the fence with getting the tickets, but it would have been a whole McGilla getting into New York. And I just I just figured it would have been madness there. And, you know, she's 11. Who knows what's going on there? So I watched it on pay-per-view. But if I was going to get the tickets, it absolutely would have been through our friends at GameTime. GameTime.co. If you're on your laptop there, 
But just put the app on your phone and do what I did when I nailed my Springsteen tickets. Boom, boom, morning of the event in Jersey, 18 rows from the stage and at an amazing price. Um, that's my personal story here. Um, I love the app. The layout is unbelievable. You, it, it goes by your area, so it'll suggest things to you, or you could just search something specific. Um, the app is loaded with uh, seat views from whatever seat you're looking at uh, in the arena or the theater. Listen, guys, it's Christmas, okay? You guys are going to be going to shows. You uh, The Rockettes. Uh, can I get some Rockettes tickets? Steve, bring up the Rockettes here. Let me see. Uh, if I wanted to go to uh, uh, Radio City Music Hall up here in New York, um, uh, I think it's probably called the, uh, the, the... Oh, there it is. Okay, so there they we go. Like they make third. They make thirty grand a year. The Rockettes do, but they get they get medical. But they get medical. So let me see. What can I see? What can I select there? So we got the seats as low as a hundred, a uh, hundred and fifty-two bucks, hundred twenty-nine. Two. There's an orchestra seat for one ten. That's unbelievable. The Radio City uh, Christmas Show. Guys, get your Christmas tickets at game time. Whether you're going to New York and going to be at the uh, Radio City or all your local events there. You know what I tried to do? They, I, I couldn't get tickets. I actually should try on game time because um, my wife went to the uh, the theater box office. So we, at Christmas time, we spend a little time in uh, Maryland on the Potomac there at the Gaylord National. And uh, the Ford's Theater does uh, was doing a Christmas carol. So you can sit in the very theater that uh, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in. Um, if you're dark like that, and uh, watch a show. So I, I could not get four tickets together for my family. So I'm going to try game time for that as soon as I get off the air, and I want you guys to try it for whatever you're going to see this holiday season. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and just for you guys, for you listeners, for you special folks, use the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code KLIQ, $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you, game time, for being here with us, as always. Some, uh, some negativity in the AEW locker room we're hearing. And it brought some stuff to mind that I want to ask you specifically about, Kevin. Let's cover the story first. Okay, Sull Sullivan got fired from. Uh... Yes, not the taskmaster, but uh, the was he VP? I think the. Uh... I know he was in charge of post production. I think he was the yeah, VP of yeah, production or something. Yeah. Um. Now I th I think some of the uh, some of the audience is popping a little because it was a a WWE hire in AEW that made the firing. This is, uh, I will I will get to that in a second. Um, according to S.E. Scoop's heavy sense of negativity due to ticket sales, you don't, we don't have to, this has been no uh, secret on this show. Uh, we've put some images of the, uh, where the hard cam is sitting uh, across from that shot. Um, but, uh, Mel Dave Meltzer added that there was a lot of negativity right now. Some of it, some of it's due to ticket sales. Um, while shows like World's End and All In 2024 were doing well, the weekly TV tapings have struggled struggled to perform. Um, the issue is not new to AEW. So you know, I, I saw a thing. Uh, they were mm -hmm. talking to Jericho, and you know, Jericho was the first major star to sign with with AEW. And they asked him, you know, how were if he felt that they would, you know, were where they would be, and he's, you know, he actually said that he actually they they far had succeeded, where he, they, you know, would be at this at this point, which, you know, five years, you know, I think they're just shy of five years, and you know, they did that when when things were uh, a little bit disorganized over at the other camp at WWE for a minute. And there was a little bit of some some things going back and forth, and you know they were Vince. You're making reference to? I not not so much. I'm just just everything that there was some. You know, Vince was in kind of in and out of the uh, the sale, the sale, and in and out of creative. 
you know, like they're they're back on bedrock again in shows. Like the, the shows are really solid. Um, but you know, you look at it for for five years, and they they there were some points where they you know they they made some runs where AEW was 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 strong. But I think that you know they they by losing J, losing Jade and losing Phil is you know that's that's not you know that's not gonna that's significant. So Mike Mansuri is the uh, former WWE exec who joined AEW last year and uh, made the call on the firing of Sullivan. So that sounds the like the Doors keyboardist. <laughs> Ray, uh, Manzarek, that would be. It's a theme show. Were we on air for the Doors? Or yeah, we were. Right? Okay, I think so. Um, but people within AEW had an issue with the optics of somebody associated with WWE. Um, having the power to terminate someone in AEW who's been there since 2019. Kev, I'm going to bring you back to 1996. Hmm. You've talked about on shows uh, that we've done with kayfabe commentaries about the lunch meat days, is <laughs> how it can best be described. Or as said by, by, <laughs> by, by my, my, my brother, uh, Nobody could say it quite like Scott Hall. Every time somebody would walk into the into the cafeteria at one of the house shows, he just just loud as he could say, "You get your sandwich." So. Scott would say it. Yeah. Yeah. So those they were the uh, the salad days, and um, I found a memo. I got to give uh, credit to uh, to the cat here who has this. I'll get his name in a second uh, on his page. Uh, he was a a photographer for WWE, and he. Uh, I have a memo here uh, from Linda in '96. Twelve ways that they were going to cut costs and save some money, as opposed to sixty ways to leave your lover. Right. Uh, nothing on here about getting on the bus, Gus. But uh, <laughs> but you help. don't need to s- discuss much. <laughs> you don't. You just uh, <laughs> let yourself go. Uh, so uh, purportedly, I mean, this is uh, as best I can. Uh, I'll, I'll credit the photographer. Uh, send me his name, Steve, so that I can uh, properly uh, give this guy Tom Buchanan is the photographer. So, um, so the memo reads as follows. This would have been from 96. So, Kevin, this was probably in your inbox uh, on your email. But, of course, we, did Kevin have email in 1996 is the question. Or did this have to be handed to you? No, that, no, they, this, would have, no, this was for the office. This was exclusively office, so talent never saw this? No, the office, <clears throat> we never saw this. All like, right. Well, because telephone per, could. Personal telephone. phone calls? No. Hell, we, where the hell were we making phone yeah, calls at? In the hotel. Red Roof Inn? Right. Which, yeah, want to charge us back to Titan? So this says the following. Over the last few weeks, we've had many meetings and discussions about our profit improvement plan. Well, it's an executive move there to put a positive face on it. I called it cost cutting, which had been a very anti-CEO way to present this to your employees. Profit improvement plan sounds positive. Just kind of bang through them like, real quickly, the first two, and let's... Let's just kind of think of what kind of numbers, like crystal rock water will no longer be, there'll be no more bottled crystal rock water water at Titan Towers, and we're going to be going to drinking fountains. So what what kind of save is that? Like, Well, let's start with the telephone. Effective today, everyone will be responsible for all personal long-distance telephone calls. This was in the day, 96, where you had to pay if you were calling long distance. At the end of each month, you will receive a call listing for all long distance calls made from your extension. Please review it and send your check made payable to Titan Sports to accounting. Now, I would just wait until JJ was out at another city and call everybody I had to call that day from his office. That's still going to come back. No, because it's his extension. It's still, they'll get you. They'll get you. 
I'll okay. get you. So send your checks for your to call your sick aunt in Portland uh, to Titan Sports. Crystal Rock Water will uh, they will discontinue as Kevin said the purchase of bottled water at Titan Tower at the distribution center when the water supply we have in house is depleted. Over the next few weeks, we will install drinking fountains at TV and phase bottled water at the facility also. Cafeteria. We've attempted to change the service and at least break even, but we have been unsuccessful. As of Monday, we will discontinue our cafeteria service. The lunchroom will be open for you to bring your sandwich and eat it, I guess. Uh, and soon we will provide more vending machines for your use. So grab the Oreos and you can still sit in the cafeteria Sweet. and uh, tally up how many long distance calls you made that day. Security. This is one of my favorites. We will eliminate the security at Titan Tower and the TV facility effective at the end of today. A receptionist will be at the B-level lobby uh, at T and at TVs uh, to greet our guests. But that guy, I guess the AKs weren't coming into public places at that time because I don't know. I don't know what the receptionists look like at uh, at Titan Tower, but I don't know how they would have dissuaded someone from coming in looking to do some damage. But um, maybe they were stocky in nature, Kev. Maybe. Maybe some workers put at the front desk. Federal Express. We've seen a dramatic reduction in Federal Express, but there is still room to improve. All requests must absolutely be necessary. I'll bring up the next page for me here. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, spending authority beginning today. I'm instituting a radical new procedure for expenditure approvals. A table of authority which indicate indicates who is authorized to spend the company's funds will be circulated to everyone. In the past, department heads were permitted to sign contracts, purchase inventory, and commit expenditure dollars without senior management approval. All such items and all monies to be spent, regardless of the amount, except as indicated on the attached, must be approved by Doug Sages or myself. Now, who was Doug Sages, Kev? Is this anyone you dealt with? No, nobody I dealt with. Okay. Check requests and or purchase order must be completed. This process will be uh, refined as we proceed, but I am convinced we will be better able to harness our spending with this procedure. Seven covers the Kodak copy machine, Kevin. I, you know, the, the few times I was in the office, I always thought to myself, you know, that's a really wasted fucking copy machine over there. As you walk through, you're like, nobody's yeah. even copying anything today. I, I, boom, I was spot on. What are they paying for that? <laughs> we have evaluated our usage and found that a number of machines are significantly underutilized, as Diesel said when he was walking through. As such, we will be eliminating some of the machines in the near future. <laughs> this will mean that the machine locations will be less convenient for some of us. Kev, did you drop the dime on this one and say, I, hey, Linda, I, I, now I, I two think machines the, on this floor. I, that, I think the statute of limitations is is is. Uh, you is, can confess. Yeah, I, I, it was because your face I, was blurred on the video. I, when what I, I did was actually this. put my face on the the copy machine, and then when it came out, I said, "Is this fucking machine really necessary?" Number eight, so, insurance benefits. One idea that continually surfaced in our meetings. To save costs would be to have employees contribute to the cost of our medical insurance. Effective December 1st, we shall change our policy to reflect those costs. During the following weeks, we shall provide you with various coverage options. Temporary personnel. Here's my, this is my favorite one of all of them. Oh, nine. I knew why. I know why. Uh, uh, let me read it. We can shall, I read it? Yeah, please. We shall eliminate temporary personnel. But under extreme situations, will be evaluated by a complete blob, worthless piece of shit known to the company as Lisa Wolf. Like, how about how about chopping that bitch off? To just like, what is she doing? Let me tell you my favorite Lisa Wolf story. Lisa Wolf calls up my wife, and she says. You know, with your husband being the 
the uh, champion, it's it's much like a football team. Uh, your husband being the quarterback, and the quarterback's wife always runs the uh, you know the activities for the team's wives. And my wife is sitting there, and she's listening, she's listening, she's listening. My wife goes, well, yeah, Lisa, but you have to realize that, like, say, we at the time lived in Arizona. She goes, like, all the Cardinals, like, during the season, their their families all live in the, the, the Phoenix area. She says, we've got nobody that lives in Phoenix. And she said, how would I possibly get together with the wives when three quarters of them are in the Northeast? And Lisa Wolf just, are just, <laughs> and then we're talking about running shit through this fucking bitch. So wait, so it was going to be like a little auxiliary club, like, Oh yeah. Like my, my, my wife was like, shit? like throw, yeah, like throw fucking little mixers and oh, it's so-and-so's birthday. Let's maybe get six of the, the, Fuck, man, they're cutting back water. <laughs> uh, Brilliant. I'm gonna have her on. I found her. We're, we're gonna get her on the show. Just you can go over some of the some of the decisions. Kev, I want to ask you. You you always referenced the um the catering thing as an indicator that things might not be going well. Yeah, my, c- my catering wanna- is. Catering is always an indicator of how things are to come. When things were better, uh, I guess the beginning of the run, before they switched to the sandwiches. You oh had... no! It was oh. it was pressed pressed chicken and, and and baked ziti with maybe a tossed Greek. It was not. So it was never good while you were there. No. Okay. Um, but I don't think WCW had anything for Nitro. No, when I was there, the, like the oh oh for three Oz. years prior, yeah, yeah. So you know, but also I didn't live on the road thirty days. You know, like I was, you know, you go to you go to face to face, at you'd be there like eleven on Monday. You do that until like six, then you go to the Manhattan Center shoot the raws it was just like if you would view it and I'm, I'm talking pressed waffle house chicken breasts with fucking dry ass noodles and some marinara sauce like ragu with a fucking heat lamp on it and everybody how many of the boys that were like working out and worrying about their bodies and like, ate there you you no choice. Someone was couldn't no, go out and, and no, well, there was nothing there. No. There was nothing anywhere in the city. I mean, I no, I'm mean, nowhere. We're in Sanford. We're at the we're at the uh, the studios, and it was like how we were we were drinking that Ico Pro shit, Ico Pro, <laughs> and eating those Ico Pro bars. I mean, one thing we weren't going to get is fat because fucking we were in such a calorie deficit. Hilarious. Now, as 1099s, there they wouldn't really have been any other way uh, for the company to, for you to be affected by company cutbacks or anything. You, you were renting your own cars. You were getting your own hotel rooms. Yeah, there was getting nothing. Getting your own meals. Were there per diems for? Uh, no. For production, for, for uh, production nope. days, nothing. No. We got paid $75 for a TV day, and that was to cover hotel, food. <laughs> And fucking a rental car, and ninety percent of TVs were done in the Northeast. You tell me how many people, even in nineteen ninety four, yeah, you know, seventy five bucks didn't cover the room. No, Forget about the food, let, let alone a, a town car, let alone gas, let alone going over the fucking a couple of bridges. Yeah, Verzano Bridge was seven bucks back then. Yeah. Yeah. But How about a draw? Thing, could you get it? Could you get a draw? Yeah, on you your... get a two hundred dollar draw against your fucking uh, weekly you know, up there. Uh, you know, against your your Pikeville house show uh, payment of one eighty seven. 
<laughs> they bill you for the thirteen. I, I've actually seen pe- I've actually seen people after like get checks and owe the company money for taking not, like not even making two hundred bucks a day on the road. Right. Now, when you when you jump ship, uh, bingo. I was gonna say night and day, right? Because uh, Scott and I both had luxury hotels, which included they had to have a restaurant, luxury rental cars. We each got our own. He got a Cadillac. I got a Cadillac. Um, first class air which I had after I became champion uh, at WWE. But I had first class air. And then um, it was all... The one thing that used to always piss me off was it was never... The boys never got... It never went the opposite way. If If they flew you into Casper, Wyoming... And there was no first class. It wasn't like that. We'll put you in a private. It was you fucking fly coach. They don't have uh, luxuries there. You'll drive in a midsize. It was you know what I mean. It mm-hmm. was never. It was never the upside to that. And that was my argument all the time, you know. And then I said, well, fuck it. Then you're in a breach. Of, you're a breach of contract. Well, what could they have done though? Like, let's say upgrade. Put you in a limousine and put you in a fucking private plane. I'm not asking for to be put in a fucking Citation Five. Put me in a King Air. How often would that happen, though? Not very often, but enough to bitch about. Right. I mean, it, it wasn't as glaring as the fucking Xerox machine, but few things were. What did you fly in WWE? Was it Coach or Coach? You- my first. Here, here's a scene for you. We are um, leaving Newark, flying to India, and in my aisle is, and it goes 353 across. It's Taker, me, and Yoko in those those five seats. Right. So so we each have a seat open between us. Mm Mm-hmm. And I mean, it was just like, just god awful. Yoko needed two, right? Obviously. Well, Yoko, because he was his his uh, rear was so big. It, like when he sat down, he was like, you put Yoko in a towel car, and his head would be like against the the, the ceiling of the car because his, yeah. you know, he has so much girth. So when you got to WCW, and you both had uh, you and Scott had uh, individual luxury. Town cars. You didn't ride together. No, we would give we we'd give the the Latino guys. We'd give them our one of our cars. Oh, you give one and then ride together. I give K Dog, give K Dog one of the cars, or Ray and Hoovy, or you know, we'd give. Mm-hmm. We all we we all traveled the, the uh, Latino. How'd you get along group. with Hoovy? I just throw that in. Yeah, along with all the guys. I mean, I just. Donut and I became became you know tight pretty quick, and um, just I always tried to take care of Carlos mostly the best I could because he was smart as fuck too, man. I mean, there's people can say whatever they want about you know everybody's got their Conan story and everybody's got their Kevin Nash story, but I tell you one thing, Conan didn't even work for the WWE, and when I when I came into to, WCW, he said, you ever notice that Xerox machine? I'm like, you son of a bitch. (laughs) So, he knew. Yeah, so so when I hear stories about uh, morale, ticket sales, AEW, I think back to these days. Even the big, listen, even the big companies that are now on top, they had their moments. So maybe some cost-cutting measures, if put in place... By, I just well, I, I, I was watching a, a, a podcast, and uh, there were, the podcast was talking about. There are others. Yes, there there are others. Oh. I was watching one because I this was directly towards 
uh, what kind of money Phil was making, uh, CM Punk w- was making. And um, they were just like, well, he was making, f- he must have been making like five or 10 a- on contract. They go, okay. And then the, the one guy says, yeah, and he was on that show Heels. He was probably making a million an episode on that. And I'm thinking, Jesus, like, do you have, do you have any idea what a, what a million, like, who gets a million dollars for something like that? Like Tom Selleck on Blue Bloods, which has been on for fucking 20 seasons, I think he caps out at 300. Right. You know? Especially nowadays with, with uh, this isn't like back when there were f- not when, seven primetime shows on. Well, not only that, too, it's like, like when I shot that first John Wick, it was like, Everybody that had a part in that movie, they sh- they, they brought them in. They, sh- they don't shoot in order. Right. They bring them in. They shoot their scenes. They get them out of there. You know, it's a five. If, if you shoot a, a full five days, man, that's an, that's a lot of a lot of time on 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 them. Yeah. So we just got uh, Jennifer Aniston's making two million an episode for. Um, I'm gonna call it Good Morning America. It's the it's supposed to be Good Morning America. That's the morning show. Yeah. Right. So, that's and, and so we're thinking that CM Punk was getting half of that for heels. Half of the, but yeah, yeah, because and and who has she's in eighty percent of every episode too. But so, uh, also Jennifer Aniston, what did she make during the, the million course an of that? How much? How much was his Friends? They all got a million an episode. They right. always stayed. And, their and, contracts. And stayed what the year same. was that? And what year was it? nine? Yeah, yeah, nineties. So I know right now that a million dollars in '96 is 1.97 today. So it's consistent. She's making two now. She's making one then. One point spread. I mean, within 30k. Yeah. So I'm thinking those figures mightn't be accurate, Kevin. Uh, yeah, but the, the guy came up with a total of seventeen million dollars. It's like net <clears> when <throat> the, you, you read these things, and I, I'll read my net worth. Kevin, you knew exactly. I'm looking at the inflation calculator. You knew exactly what the one million. Do you sit around and just calculate what you, you know the first run money is today? So when a promoter calls you, like in Wales. And wants you to do a signing. If you're not, I'm just saying, man. I, I, yeah, I, I, I make sure I know everything. You sure do. Go ahead. You were telling a story, but it, but it, especially when, like, no, nobody, nobody knows how to negotiate for me quite like me. But um, what was I going to say? Well, we were talking Aniston money and uh, and yeah, but um. Oh, so the, the, the you'll, see, you'll see these things and they'll say, you know, so and so's net worth. And they'll have the top 20 net worths of professional wrestlers. And I'll see somebody that's like, my, they'll have my net worth is $8 million. And then they'll have somebody else's is like 30. And that person I know doesn't have a pot to piss in, doesn't have fucking any. And I'm thinking to myself, like, how could you possibly know how much Kevin Nash is worth? All of my vehicles are in my trust. So there's no way that you could possibly, just from a vehicle search, and I looked on Forbes, uh, I looked at Forbes, I was worth $12 million. I had, a, I think, a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, like all these cars that fucking I couldn't get my in let alone my, my body to drive. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, you would have to know my S Corp. You would have to know all my LLCs, the LLCs that feed into the life insurance policy. How like you, like, There's just absolutely no way that you could track, you know, my, my, my funding. Right. Yeah. So I see these these things too. They 
They, so the only thing they must do, Kevin, is they find a salary point that's reported somewhere, and they multiply that over however many years you're working. I don't know if you're saving your money, if you're investing your money. How would anyone know who compiles this list? Looking at a list now that has... Is this supposed to be current net worth of the big yeah. show? $16 million? The under, Just a million under The Undertaker? Jericho, yeah. 18? 18 million. Why the hell is he doing a podcast? Uh, Bill Goldberg, 16. Batista, 16. Jarrett, 15. I'm thinking, Jarrett, I'm thinking, 15. I'm He's thinking, doing a podcast. I'm thinking Batista. Would, would Of any of those guys in that lump, mm -hmm. Batista would have the highest net worth. Who was at the top? Vince. All right, Vince, fine. Yeah. Rock, 800 Dwayne, million? absolutely. That's almost a billion dollars, though, Kevin. A billion for Dwayne? I'm putting uh, him at 25. I'm sorry, I'm putting him at 25, 30 million. 20, 25, 30? Yeah. No, he's that production company, man. All the fucking money that gets dumped into that? How do you value a production company? It's not an asset. I mean. All right, uh, 50. 50. Trips, Triple H, $250 million. Was that Stephanie also, $250 million? See, then I, I, I got a, a ballpark of what Austin's worth. Mm -hmm. and what do they have the, him here? What do they have 30. Him? 30. I would say Steve's 45, 50. Okay. Hulkster, 25? I don't not, I, I, not anymore, I, right? Right? Oh. I, I'd heard that he was he was taken to the cleaners by... Uh, by uh, Everybody. Uh, yeah. Unless, unless it, it's like that Gawker money, but then I heard that the Gawker thing was, 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 was very, very minute. Did he actually get that $31 million in the settlement? It looks no. Like. Oh, okay. I, that's not what I heard. Well, that would that would account for some of that twenty five. So, Bella Twins twenty million. I don't know. If Jericho had eighteen million, you think he'd be doing Fozzie, a podcast, and working fucking his ass off? I don't know. That's that's kind of a, my reaction when I saw his name on the eighteen million right there. I'll tell you right now. If I had fifteen, Mick Foley fourteen. I had 15, you wouldn't see me again. Ever. All right, guys, the high spot of the show brought to you by our friends Mickey Ray Sinatra and Courtney and their Get Blitzed Lit Aid, which Kevin's friends have uh, recently uh, confirmed is their hearty beverage of substance. That's right, it's Nano Infused Delta 9. If you don't want to know what we're talking about, it's nano-infused Delta-9 THC sip and syrup, okay? Um, you might have tried it yourself, and you can attest to how uh, potent and wonderful it is. It's, it's like THC on steroids is the way they describe it. It's a syrup, okay? You mix it in any beverage, tea. Kevin's recipe, again, that I know you guys are trying out there. It's the key lime flavor in a... Um, in a Sprite Diet Sprite. Zero. Diet Sprite, Sprite Zero. Um, as little as a teaspoon. Very fast onset. Okay, this isn't that kind of shit where you got to guess what's going to be going on in an hour and be like, oh, oh, I should have more. No. Five to 15 minutes, nano-infused means it goes right to your bloodstream, bypasses the breakdown in the liver, and works like alcohol. It is a tolerance killer. This is not gas station Delta 8 bullshit, guys. This is the real deal. THC, Delta 9, the THC you get from marijuana. If you're in Maryland, you can visit the Stay Lit Smoke Shop. But for the rest of us, it is legal to ship Get Blitzed to all 50 states without a med card as long as you're over 21. Right now, you can save 15% by entering the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q. So go to get-blitzed.com. That's get-blitzed.com and um, use that promo code K-L-I-Q. Save your 15% and uh, get your party on, y'all. So one of my buddies is a, is a daily cannabis user, and um, we've all got this upper respiratory thing down here. So smoking's like he he couldn't smoke, and so he called me up. He said, um, 
because he, he he listens to the show. And he said, hey, Matt, he says, you know, does that stuff work? I said, yeah. He says, can I come down and get some? I said, yeah. <laughs> so he drove down, and uh, I hooked him up, and then, like, he just kind of hung out there for a while, and he was just like, I'm, I'm not getting anything. And I'm thinking, like, like, like by, by now, I, you know, and I said, ah, I said, your tolerance is too high. I said, do another, just like, do like another half a dose. Half a teaspoon was, was all it took? Yeah, another half. And he was like, he was, he said, he says, man, I'm perfect. He said, I'll be able to drive. He got home and he goes, well, I got interested about halfway home. God. Well, I'm glad he made it. And no, it's, it's all 35 safe. miles an hour. It's cool. And think about that. It comes in the kind kind of like a cough syrup type bottle. Yeah. And all you need is a teaspoon. That thing will last you forever. Go check out our guys at uh, at Get Blitz. Thank you guys for for being here. We're glad we can help you guys. I know you're doing well, and uh, and you should. Uh, ask Nash. Hashtag Ask Nash is what this is all about. You want access to the big guy? Uh, that's how you do it on social. Hashtag Ask Nash. We will uh, pose questions to him. And if you want to be part of our live audience every week, uh, please go to clickthistv.com. Sign up. And you'll be able to join us every week, get the show early, no commercials, all fun stuff. Uh, exclusive content as well. So Uncaged Rage has said, with Deadpool 3 being a crossover event with different versions of Deadpool and other X-Men characters, I want to know, have you been offered this time around to be a variant of Sabretooth since you missed it the first time around? Both Tyler and Live are supposedly back. I haven't heard it. No? Okay. Oh. So not yet. No. Caged rage. Could happen, though. Slovakia 99. Was it a rib from Vince to put you and Triple H in a ladder match? And who came up with the bright idea of Sledgehammer being the object to climb for when it's a no DQ and you can beat your opponent with anything else? I thought it was a rib on me. I don't know if it was a rib on Paul, but definitely a rib the ladder. on me. Just a rib but all together. I mean, just... Like I said, I, I I had long hair in that match. I went home and I fucking woke up after I after I shook up my concussion in a couple of days. I had my wife cut my hair off. That Peter, was that mm-hmm. was it. Peter D. Hey Kevin, uh, what would you do? A former work colleague who I lunched with and have heard from occasionally over the years asked me for a loan of five hundred dollars for her son who was in trouble. Will be paid back today, guaranteed. I paid the money. I'm sure people have come to you and asked you for loans. I don't have a problem loaning people money. How well do you have to know the person? Very well, and they're also going to have a a legal document put in front of them that they'll be signed. Not for 500 bucks, probably. Fuck. Right? Huh. I forgot who I was talking to. Take out your uh, take out your inflation <laughs> calculator and find out what $500 is going to be in two fucking years. Uh, exactly. How about some questions from the audience? What do we got here? Some of I don't think, I, I mean, mm. you know, I always give somebody ample time to pay it back six months. Then after that, it goes to 10% interest. After six months, it goes to 20. 20% interest. You should be working for the Gambinos. Oh, fuck then. You know what? Then they should be working at McDonald's and making an extra 500 bucks. All right. What do we got in the audience? Our friends here who joined clickthistv.com. Uh, Dan Updike would like to know your real net worth. Not here. Uh but here's an actual question. Uh, do you still have your Bronco from your SummerSlam check? It's refreshing as hell to hear somebody who has made well-earned money and is responsible with it. Still got, still sitting in my garage. You still do, don't you? I saw yeah. it in there. And you still have it for sentimental reasons? You still don't need it. No, I don't need it. I mean, it's 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 just, right now I just don't drive it because it's just such a, it's just 
the carbon footprint is fucking half of China when you start the thing. You know, so. Who else is in the house here with a question? Uh, Dan again. Uh, my uncle tells me a story where Undertaker got spit on at a house show in Syracuse before Kevin made the jump. And Taker broke the security guard's arm trying to get to him. True, he was working Kev. Incident in Syracuse where Taker went into the audience? I, I wonder if it was after. And I was already in the casket getting wheeled back. Could be. Could be. Um, OIF 09 Vet. June 1st, 1998. Nitro is when Sting chooses between NWO Black and White and Wolfpack. When he goes to rip the shirt, he can't do it and has to resort to tearing it from the bottom. Gimmicked or a rib? I mean, who the fuck rips a shirt from the bottom? Somebody that can't get it from the neck? I'm just guessing. But uh, no one did anything to the shirt to prevent it from being. No, I would. But terrible. I would have. I would have. Anytime I had to tear a shirt, I always gimmick the neck. Yeah, you know, gimmick, gimmick get that first strand right there. Yeah. Did you have it? Was uh, their video coming up? I heard. Uh, I heard what I thought might have been uh, Eric Bischoff. All right, so we have some video here, ensuring that. Either we won't be monetized for this or we're Maven. Uh, let's see the uh, the tear. It's coming. It's coming. Big slam on the giant by Sting. And here it is. Forgot to cut it, I guess. And he's really struggling with the neckline, but he does rip it from the bottom to reveal his uh the red and black baby is how about the audience anyone finish this off that was a loud ass pop that night yeah uh who else in the house huge road road warrior pop anyone else we done no here we go jen vargo hi jen kev worst restaurant experience other than your steak dinner with sean in florida Mm. which wasn't that bad Well, I, after my leg workout today, the, the lady brought me brought sweetened tea, sweetened iced tea to my fucking table three times. And you wanted unsweet. And I wanted unsweet. And she said, "I." They, they must have switched it around because I, I'm thinking like, there's two containers. I could see if you went up to the one and brought back. So wouldn't you go to the other one? Right, yeah. And then it's like at that point, like the, then you would have said, "Well, I'm sorry, sir. They're both. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. She was fine. She got a thirty percent tip. Wasn't like she ran out of petite fillets yeah, it wasn't like or she, anything like that. It was that. like she ran out of pancakes." Click This is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast Heat, created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Nash, and Sean Oliver, producer Steve Kaufman, graphics by Dominic D'Angelo, title sequence and audio edit by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash, copyright 2023, Butch and Sundance Media. Kev, enjoy Germany, and do you want to do another one? Yeast. Say it in German. Das ist gut, ja. Never answers the thing